today on Direction for Life. I am challenging you that we get this knowing that no matter what we go through, that no matter what we are dealing with, we rise up. That we are the she that chooses to rise. That we get up, that we encourage, that we make good, that we endure, and that we continue, and then we help our sisters up. And we're gonna rise in our night season. We gotta choose. I'm gonna rise. Hello, welcome to the Direction for Life broadcast. I'm Marsha Bailey, and I'm so glad you're with me on today. First, I want to say Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. This is our day, right? This is our day. Well, I have a word for you, and it's titled, She Rises. There's times in life, things happen, and we fall flat on our back because our knees were taken out from us, and things are real, and life is real. But God has a real word for our real situation, and that's She Rises. So let's get around this word today, and let's talk about She Rises. You are enough. Okay, say that with me right now. I am enough. I am enough. Amen. So this is Mother's Day, so my message is geared towards women today. Brothers, you can glean some things from this also, but I want to be a, blessings to my, a blessing to my sisters. So the 10th verse says, a capable and intelligent and virtuous woman, and I want you to circle those words because we're going to pull them out. Who is he who can find her? So he's to the mom say, listen, I want you to find a capable woman. I don't want you to find an intelligent woman, and I want you to find a virtuous woman. So who can find her? She is far more precious than jewels, and her value is far above rubies or pearls. Say, so when you get a woman who's intelligent, when you get a woman who's capable, and when you get a woman who's virtuous, you can't pay enough for her. She is, her price is far above rubies, meaning to treasure her. When you have that type of woman, he said you're going to treasure her because she's priceless. The heart of her husband trusts in her confidently and relies on and believes in her securely so that he has no lack of honest gain or need of dishonest spoil. Why? Because she's capable, because she's intelligent, and because she is virtuous. 15 verse, she rises while it is yet night and gets spiritual food for her household and assign her maids her task. I want to read the message translation from the, the, the 10th and 11th verse. A good woman, a good woman, a good woman is hard to find. I heard the Lord say, say it one more time. A good woman is hard to find. <laughs> and worth far more than diamonds, her husband trusts her without reserve and never had reason to regret it. Never spiteful, she treats him generously. All her life long. Isn't that good? He said, so when you find a woman, you'll treat, this is just extra. She'll treat you generously, pressed down, shaken together, running over where the blessings of the Lord will come into your life because you done found a good woman. And so I want to pull out. Let's go back to the 15th verse. I want to pull out the first part of the 15th verse. She rises while it's yet night and get spiritual food. So the message title today is She Rises. Amen. She Rises. And there's certain things as life goes on and it's getting really crazy when, when, the, when you know, as we approach the coming of the Lord, things are escalating, stuff will get really stupid. And I want to encourage you women that we have to recognize that we are capable we're intelligent, and we're virtuous, so we have the ability to rise while it's yet night. And so I want to encourage you women, it's easy to lay down. 
It's easy to give up, man. You just go, just cope, just let the current take you out. But it takes Holy Ghost strength. It takes the word of God to stand up in the adversity that life has given you. So I want to encourage you this morning. This is our goal that as women, we choose to become the she that rises and say, I will rise up in my night season. Rise above the fray. As women today, we have to rise above the fray. There's so many people saying stuff, doing stuff. Social media, y'all, is crazy with some foolishness. It will distract you, aggravate you, and make you want to go to a place. I'm digressing. But you got to rise above the fray. When people talk about you, rise above the fray. Rise above your trauma. Rise above your hurt. Rise above your grief. And rise above your disappointment. God created us, ladies. We created us and wired us to have the capacity to rise above the fray. When he created us, he created us in his image. And he also created us to subdue and dominate. So you can subdue the issues and issues and the matters that's in your life that are overwhelming you and try to take you out. So we have wiring to conduct ourselves wisely, intelligently, and skillfully. That's a word for us this season. We need to conduct ourselves intelligently, skillfully, and wisely. I said on Friday during Women's Bible Study that, you know, we can redeem the time, you know, but I'm so tired of having to redeem the time. I want to keep my wits about me so I can operate and, and I take full advantage of the time. Amen? And so that's the challenge for us this morning, that we no longer be up and down, up and down, up and down. It's a fight. It's challenging. But we're not going to do it in our own strength. And that we also identify with the me, the me that God created me to be on the inside. There's a you that God created you to be that has capability, has the ability to think your way out of situations, and has the ability to stand underneath the pressure. So that's how he created us to be. So in the midst of chaos and heartbreak, she rises. Man, there's certain women throughout history who rose in the midst of chaos, in the midst of situation. They rose. I, um, there's Serena Williams, a, a tennis star. She had injury, and she has frustration. She had losses, but she made a decision that I'm going to rise. Amen? I like that. <laughs> Some of you need to look at your situation, you know, figuratively and go like this. I'm going to rise. I'm not going to let it take me out. So I want to talk to you about the night, what the night means. Nighttime re represents a time period, a season. It's dark. So night, of course, you know, we all had some sleep at night. Some had more than others. Praise the Lord. But night is a time period is that it's dark. You can't see without the aid of light. You know, you ever go try to go to the bathroom at, in, in the middle of the night and you move something that during the day, but your mind remembers it being at a other place? And what happens, you start to walk through the path that you have basically walked for years. And then you're walking, and then all of a sudden something's in the way, and you hit it, hit yourself because it's dark, you can't see. So you can get bumps and bruises, hurts, and sores during the nighttime. I mean, I got a couple of bruises on my leg because I, I walk and I move things and I bump into them. So at nighttime, you can get a bruise. Nighttime, you can hit something because you can't see. It's also a time possibly of confusion, hopelessness, frustration, Things look negative. It's a negative doctor's report, your nighttime. She rises while it's yet night. It's a negative doctor, doctor's report. It could be a miscarriage. She rises while it's yet night. It could be grief. She rises while it's yet night. A lost job. So the night season is something that causes confusion in your life. 
and you, don't, and you can't see. You need help. You need aid. It also is a period of time between evening and day. Inactivity. It's a time of rest. So it's a transitional season. It's the waiting place. Waiting for your healing. Waiting for your deliverance. Waiting for your breakthrough. Man, you know, like children, they can't stand when time for uh, nighttime comes. They fight to sleep because they don't want to go to sleep. And many of us in this season of waiting and transitioning and inactivity, you're frustrated. You're waiting. Like, when, 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 or is that just me? When is this going to happen? I mean, it's, it's not that you thought something up in your own mind, in your own head. The Lord showed you this. He gave you a vision. He gave you a word, right? But now you're waiting. It can be very frustrating. That's the night season. It's also what our mamas used to tell us, a time when nothing good happens. What she, they used to say is nothing open after midnight but what? All y'all get saved in Jesus' name. What you, <laughs> I didn't say it, honey. Nothing's open after midnight. So, but Waffle House. <laughs> or there's nothing safe going on. That's why when our kids are out after midnight, we get uncomfortable. We get uneasy. It's a time of spiritual warfare also. It's a time of demonic activity. Rise means she gets up, she encourages, glory to God, she makes good, she endures, she continues and help to lift up. You know, the stronger you are as a woman, the more of a charge you have to lift up another sister. Not to put her down, but to lift up. So when we have a night nice season, we have the capacity to get up. This is what the Lord says about us. Who can find a virtuous woman, a capable, an intelligent, a virtuous woman? Who can find her? Because she rises, she gets up. You get knocked down, but you get up. You encourage, you're not a negative, angry, bitter person. You encourage, that's the real you. You make good, you endure, you continue, and you lift up. That's who we are. The other chick, we got to get rid of her. It's an invasion of the body snatching going on. I'm going to be honest, my body been snatched a few times. Dasha showed up. I haven't introduced y'all to Dasha, but some of the old members know who Dasha is. It's the dark side of Marsha. The dark side. I need my Darth Vader hat for that. She had to go. <laughs> I got scared of her after a while. <laughs> Girl, you scared me. I'm going to get right. <laughs> Dasha helped me to walk right. She helped me to walk on the path of righteousness because she was unconverted, unregenerated. That's my soul. It's my life experience. It's everything I've been through. It's how people treated me. Is what I learned how to do. Ain't nobody thinking about you but you. Every man help herself. God help us all. It was, that's her. And I had to get rid of her because it was unprofitable for me in the kingdom. It was in conflict with the word. So I had to make a decision. I got to dump that chick. So ladies, we have, again, the capacity to be intelligent, capable, virtuous, regardless of the season we may be in our life. We have the capacity to rise up, get up, to encourage people. We have the capacity to run our households and get spiritual food 
for our family. That's a word of encouragement. Women, you have a capacity to tap into the throne room of God and hear a word about your life, hear a word about your children, hear a word about your husband so you can stay encouraged, so you can lift yourself up, so you can empower yourself to do what God has called you to do. Ladies, again, listen, the Lord told me to tell y'all, he wanted you to know that we are wired not just with this capability, ability, you are wired with special ops. You the elite military armed forces. Some of you are the quarterbacks of your family. You have the ability to see the playing field, to see the opening and throw the ball. You're not weak. You're not powerless. You're not inadequate. You're not stupid. You're not fearful. You are strong in the Lord. So we have the ability to rise. So we are capable. Let's look at that. We are capable. We have the ability when night times come into our lives, and it will for all of us, and that's not a negative confession because Jesus says, in this world, you will have tribulation, right? But be of good cheer. So he, he said, because I've overcome the world. So there, there are things will pop off. Satan will do what he des, he's designed to do. And, but we have the power and ability to navigate our lives and navigate ourselves during the midnight experience of, the, of our lives. Psalm 16 and 7, the Amplified Translation says, I will bless the Lord who given me counsel. Yes, my heart instructs me in the night seasons. So the Lord will give me counsel, and you, he will talk to us. He will, he will give us wisdom. He will counsel us in the night seasons of our lives. I remember many a, a night the Lord giving me counseling regarding how to mother my children or how I'm going to do what I need to do. He will counsel us, but he will only counsel us if we go to him. So you have to have a prayer life. So he wants us to come to him, spend some time in prayer, and he will lead you and guide you and direct you. He'll tell you what to do, when to do, how to do it. We can't sometimes listen to the wisdom of our friends. We can't listen to the counsels of our sisterhood because they may give you stuff from their own negative experience. We need wisdom from God because he sees our end from our beginning. And he wants us not to abort the plan. He said, I got a word to help you to navigate the landmines in your life. Anybody had landmines or was I, am I the only person that had landmines? So I have to go to God and he'll tell me, Marsha, do it like this. Marsha, don't say anything right now. Marsha, just stand and see my salvation. Marsha, pick up your warfare arms. Marsha, just sing a song unto the Lord. Marsha, go talk to this person. He helps you to navigate the landmines, the traps, the booby traps that Satan has set for your life to cause you to derail and abort the plans and purposes. So he will coach us. God will coach us counsel us, and his word will lead us. His word will be a flashlight empowering us to see. Psalms 119, 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So he will give you a word. That's why we need our Bibles. I know we got them on our devices. However, whatever it works, the word is the word. But you go and get the word. You go and get the word. You go and get the word. I was looking and said, Lord was just dealing with me. So I was having a, a conflict within my soul. And I began to think about some things. The Lord began to get, he said, Marsha, go, go to Joel. And he said, I will restore unto you the year. So that word became a light for me at that moment. The word, sometimes you have it in your heart and you can pull it out of your heart. But sometimes your heart is filled with so much stuff and it got a lot to dig through. So you got to go and get the word. You sit there. So I sat. I sat with that word open. I was like, God, I need you to speak to me. And so I got the word. I said, I'm going to ride through this word of God. You're going to help me, Jesus. 
you're going to help me. And I had to stay there till I got some help. Sometimes the help won't come in a minute. It may come, it won't come in five minutes. Sometimes it'll come in an hour. But God, you're going to help me. Your word is a lamp. It's a flashlight to my soul. You're going to help me to be able to stand. Number two, we intelligent. We're intelligent. We have the capacity to think our way clear during times of tests, trials, and intensity. We have that capacity. And what the Lord began to deal with, see these ladies, they're looking at a map. They're strategic. We have, we have to tap into our executive functioning skills. We have to tap into them. They're there. Stress burns them, fries them, makes us hard to find them. But we got to tap into them. How do we tap into our executive functioning skills? And this is the ability to have emotional control. That's why they say women can't be in positions of leadership. They say that, you know, they're too emotional. They don't want women to be elected to high offices. Okay, first there were none. Then we moved into mayors. Then we moved into being governors. And, you know, we thought we were going to have our first women, woman president. They're like, no, we can't have she, Women aren't wired for that. I don't see anything in the word of God. I was going to try to make this message this kind of message. But I don't see anything in the word of God that says that we can't do certain things. And it didn't say just for men. It said them. I created he, me, them, in my image, male and female. So we have the creative a power on the inside side of us to subdue and dominate to win in every arena in your life I don't care where you are in a boardroom you may be the only female but you are intelligent and you're capable you have the power and ability through him to tap into your executive functioning skills it's a challenge God made us with emotions but under the curse they have their best with us but in him, we manage them. Amen. Emotion, God made us as women to have emotions so we can reflect the great side of God. The good side of God. The best side of God. I'm just playing. I have to say that because I don't want us as women to lose our emotions. God made us with those emotions, but we have to learn how to manage them. It's task initiative, executive functioning, task initiative, that you have tax, 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 and you have the ability to initiate on them. You ever been through some stuff and it's so hard for you to get moving? That's Satan attacking your executive functioning skills. He don't want you to initiate that thing. It's memory. You go through some stuff, I can't remember anything, I'm tired. That's, he's coming for your executive functioning skills, ladies. The ability, and we also focus attention, prioritizing, and planning. So through the Holy Ghost, 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, starting at the 12th verse, we have the ability to pull on these executive functioning skills. And we'll pull on them through praying in the Holy Ghost. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So we receive the spirit of God so that we can know some things. Which things also we speak not in the world, words which man's wisdom, wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. So the Holy Ghost would teach you some stuff. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The Holy Ghost will help you to sift through the muck and mire in your life. Man, the crazies, your life going on, the situation, is it all, it's like red alert. You need to be, just release your heavenly language so you can sift what's of God, what's not of God, to discern so you can know, God, what are you doing here? Is this you or is this the devil? So you have that capacity because the Holy Ghost will give you words to speak. 14th verse, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. You know, there's some things that the Word of God teaches us how to conduct ourselves as women, how to interact with our husband. It seems foolish. Submission, 
foolish. Not trying to get even, foolish. Now, it's, it's the world, that's the world's doing. That's the world, that's how the world conducts itself. But Romans 12 said, be not conformed, fashioned, shaped. And also you look at it, put in a box. So the world wants to put us women in a box. He wants to fashion us, and, but God said, don't do that. And the only way we can do these things that are so not natural to us, we got to pray in the Holy Ghost. Women are powerful beings. Ladies, no matter what you may be facing at this moment, you can rise above it. Dr. Marsha Bailey explains that God has given women an innate ability to overcome obstacles and soar above any mountain. Order this powerful message today. You may also get the MP3 download. Just call 1-877-798-LIFE or go online to rightdirection.info. Ask for She Rises. Praise God, I'm so glad you're still with us. But before you go, I want to pray for you. I don't know what you got going on in your life, but the Lord loves you and he cares and his strength will strengthen you. So let's go before the Father in prayer. Father, I just thank you, Lord God, for all the moms out there. I thank you, Lord God, for all the hearers, Father, that you are our help and you are our strength and you empower us to go from one place to the next place. So whatever has gotten us down, whatever has knocked us down, I thank you, Lord God, for the power of the Holy Ghost helps us to rise back up. And we thank you, Lord God, for who you are in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God for you. Listen, before you go, if you want more prayer, there's a number on the screen. There's people waiting to pray for you, and we want to thank God for you. Also, if you want this message in your library, they also will be able to assist you with that. But before you go, listen for that still, small voice saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Family, women of God, I am beseeching you. I am challenging you that we get this knowing that no matter what we go through, that no matter what we are dealing with, we rise up. That we are the she that chooses to rise. That we get up, that we encourage, that we make good, that we endure, and that we continue, and that we help our sisters up. Even though you're pressed, even though you're going something, some things, glory is being imparted to us and we're going to rise in our night season. Thank you for watching the Direction for Life broadcast. We'd also like to thank our Direction Connection partners who make this broadcast possible. Please consider partnering with us today. We would love for you to worship with us at any of our three locations. Log on to rdci.info to get connected.